I'm an everyday woman, 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 in never we wear, here, here, I'm living my life, 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 living day by day, yeah, yeah. Are you in Welcome every to Everyday woman? woman. There are some major changes happening in the talk show world. Live from Los Angeles, here's Everyday Woman. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Way Woman. So I want to continue the dialogue on the expectations of women, especially women who are middle-aged. Mm -hmm. I know, Amber, you and I were talking about that. Mm -hmm. And and I told you, what is middle-aged? I, I don't I know. I don't know. I oh, mean, okay. I, I was hoping we have to now, now, that's, that's what, what I'm wondering. Like? Is, okay. It's like, how are we even, you know, classifying middle-aged now if, you know, 30 is the new 20 is right. middle-aged 60? Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you got that wisdom. Well, I got the whistle when I'm not middle aged. I mean, I'm not ashamed of my age, though, but I, I did turn 34. So I don't know if is that middle age. I you're mean, on the brink of it. You're knocking you on middle, middle age. age. No, no, no. Break, break, you like, don't hit middle age until you're like about 45. Girl. Cheryl, are you middle age? Uh, no, um, I'm right here with Amber. <laughs> well, you're knocking on it. But, <laughs> so, no, but, I mean, like, but I am looking into the rim. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking over the, the edge. I will tell you, it is 45. It is the forgotten stage of a woman's age? life. Mm. What? 45. What do you mean it's forgotten? Because oh our God, world has me. changed so much. <laughs> yeah. Our roles have changed. Our mothers used to be younger. Yeah. They used to, how, how, how old are your moms? My mom is still in her 60s. Wow. Do you know how many moms I know who are in their 60s that have teenage kids? Mm -hmm. Middle age has changed. Well, because we, we had a forgotten class. Before wow. the family, and then they had a family later in life, and mm -hmm. now middle age just happened, and we're in a whole nother place of our lives. Right. I'm not. It's changed because of technology and yeah, everything. Mm -hmm. So everybody's but trying to absolutely. say young, they're on the computer. And it depends I mean, on what culture you grew up in yeah. and yeah. What, what technology you live with. But, mm -hmm. you, Cheryl, I wonder, do you have any sense of the expectations that you're, you know, Facing, you just got a new house. Yes. Oh, um, I mean, that's a huge yeah. responsibility. Yeah. And I want your job. Run, 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 run. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I know. I think. I think. Um, I'm not middle aged, but I think that moment when your responsibilities increase exponentially. Mm. Um, like for example, my mom is also in her 60s. Um, fortunately, the later half of the 60s, I say fortunately because my dad passed away when he was 66. Mm. So to even just surpass that, I think is a good thing. But then I look at her and it's like. Um, she's independent now, but I can, you know, I, I can see the, you know, the aging starting to set in, and yeah. you know, I, I know that, like, we're, my sister and I live nearby, and we're trying to get her to move closer to us because so you can look in after so her. we can look in on her. I mean, she's already been a cardiac patient, so we've already had to look after her in that response. Mm -hmm. And um, fortunately, you know, she's, you know, she's healed from that, but, but we always worry. Do you have Anna, a fear of taking care of your mom, or? You know what? No, because I'm, <laughs> I'm fortunate that we have enough family resources that we can get her the care oh, she okay. needs. But yeah. Anna's been looking after several of members yeah. of your family. Yeah. Well, I take care of my mom. She's young, and I, I feel, I don't know if it's being the whole Latina, Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. I don't know, no, it, but it, 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 I just feel like the necessity that no matter what, even if I had my own family, I still got to take care of her. Right. Like, I, I, I don't know. Well, yes, yeah, she's you know, she's I have mom. a confession, though. Recently, you know, I found out my father was stabbed. And in that, I got fearful because I was like, oh, my goodness, I have to take care of this man. What if I have to take okay. care of him? What if he's dead? What if I have to bury him? Mm -hmm. You know, How can you handle homeless, all of that? You know, he doesn't have any resources that I know of that will be able to take care of him. So that was that fear of, like, mm -hmm. what do I do when I have to go find him? Or, if, you know, I don't know. I mean, know. What, what do you do? What kind of expectations do you have? I, I really don't have any expectations of him, so I just kind of feel like it's kind of like me going to search for someone who I don't know. But you have that. But like it's just, you feel you got you to. Feel that right, but I feel as a child, and this is my parent, that's that's I have all. to go yeah. out and go and try and find him. You so know? it's our obligation then as children to become parents to our parents at some point. I think yeah. I just go oh, way back yeah. to well, when, in we, the, were, in when the we were younger. Asian culture right. mm -hmm. that's kind of built in that usually mm -hmm. it's the first, the oldest child, preferably the oldest son, oh, that good. is going to take oh, care of so that. Yeah. 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 It's built in. It's built in in that culture. So unfortunately, I'm the oldest, so right now I look at my 
Okay. And, and the oldest son, which is my brother. Okay, so then, so then I have a question. What if it's, al it's almost like an indirect parenting relationship? Like, for example, mm -hmm. what if you had to take care of your husband's parents? How does that impact Ooh. you? Because I know I, I they're on the, their own. The, the relationship I just got out. <laughs> they're of, on their own. The relationship I just got out of. You know, my ex. My, no, my ex boyfriend. He was the oldest son um, of eight, but his parents and were largely dependent upon him. Mm. And I, I just looked at my future. That's a huge. I looked at my future of you know, especially you know, taking care of his mom. Right. Now she has daughters, mm -hmm. but quite frankly, I felt like the the burden of her care was going to fall to me and. The, uh, the prospect of that was... Well, I, I think the whole mm. prospect of those obligations, expectations is terrifying. I can hardly mm. handle my life as it is in my 20s, but to be expected to care for my own family, my husband, and my parents, and I mean, and they're my husband's parents, and, my God, it sounds like hell. I don't know how any woman could balance those expectations. I really yeah. don't. Well, you know, I think sometimes do it. what people it forget is it. men go through a midlife crisis, mm. and we yeah. all acknowledge it. We're not alone in this. But women go through one too, and we ignore it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Either well, that or we suck it up. Ladies, <laughs> I, I definitely want to continue this conversation when we get back from this break. Coming up next, more Everyway Woman. Are you in every way, woman? If you've been wanting to turn that 12-pack into a six-pack, the doctors from Finesse Plastic Surgery are going to talk to us about the tummy tuck. Everyone wants a flatter stomach, but for some, doing crunches just isn't enough. Dr. Gown and Dr. West are here from Finesse Plastic Surgery to share some options on how to get a flatter stomach. Um, now, I understand that there's some really innovative and also some extremely invasive ways to get that appearance of a flat tummy. What would be some of the most innovative ways to start? The most invasive? Well, I'd like to start just by telling you about why this happens. So certainly in women, it's babies. Yes. In men, it's Budweiser. <laughs> so it, to, to go back to the women with pregnancies, not only does the skin stretch, but that six pack that you see in athletes also stretches and goes out to the sides. And so you get a little bit of a loosening of the tissue and less of a firm tone to the midsection. Okay. So any combination of liposuction and surgery can refine that trunk to get that better, tighter look. So you would do both, liposuction and surgery? Oftentimes it's, uh, both are done, sometimes one, sometimes another, and when we combine them together, it's called a marriage abdominoplasty. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the least invasive, or the less invasive, it's going to be something using technology, like a cool sculpting. What is a cool sculpting? So cool sculpting is a device that's been around for several years now. Essentially what it does is it exposes the fat that you're having a hard time getting rid of, it exposes it to cold. So it's a suction device is attached to you, pulls the skin and fat away from you, and exposes your, your body to a cold temperature. Your fat is actually more sensitive to cold than the skin is, so you can hurt the fat cells and make them go away without hurting your skin. Oh, wow. Takes about two months to see the results, the best candidates for that's going to be somebody who's in otherwise pretty good shape, you know, somebody who's maybe going to the gym, but no matter what they do once they hit a certain age, they just can't get rid of little trouble areas. Maybe it's their, their flanks, or maybe it's the lower part of their belly, or for some people, the, um, the fat along the bra line. So people can come in and do a non-invasive procedure in the comfort of our office while they're watching a movie and have some of that fat melted. So that's probably the easiest thing that you can do. Now, can they, can they just target a certain area? Absolutely. We have different handles or, or different uh, applicators for the different areas. So mm -hmm. inner thigh, outer thigh, lower abdomen, upper abdomen, back. We fine tune it to every patient. Okay. So that's, that's the non-invasive, that's the cool sculpting. Now fast forward into the next stage which is liposuction. Liposuction alone is good for women who are younger who still have that nice tone but have a little bit of those excess areas that they want to get rid of. And those are the regions where no matter how much working out, how many hours at the gym, they still have these collections of fat they're stubborn and won't go away. Um, how long is a recovery time for a liposuction? A liposuction, you people, you know, it depends on what you're asking. It, for the, the, part of the question is when can you go back to work? So it, depend, it really depends on how much you do. For really targeted low volume liposuction, you might, be, you might be able to do the surgery on a Thursday and go back Monday. If you're doing multiple areas and you're taking out a lot more fat, the person might need a week or two off work. It also, of course, depends on what you do. Right. You know, do you work behind a desk or do you have a really active uh, type job? In general, liposuction is, is a relatively short recovery where you have discomfort, but we don't put much, in, we don't put many limitations on you because we haven't uh, really, uh, we haven't sewn the tissue. We haven't put muscle back together that we have to worry about healing. So it's more of a soreness. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a couple of mommy circles 
And that's kind of an issue for a lot of us mothers, even though we, we can get fit and back into shape, that we seem to have this excess skin that hangs. And it's not necessarily fat. What would you do for a so mommy that, like that? that? That's exactly the next step, is going forward to what's called a mini tummy tuck mm -hmm. or a full tummy tuck. And the difference between the two is in the mini tummy tuck, it's a smaller incision. And it's mostly targeted to take care of that lower pooch of extra tissue. Yes. Right? Versus a full tummy tuck when there's more excess and loose skin all throughout the entire in, the anterior abdomen, and that requires repositioning the belly button and a little bit longer incision to get more of that skin to create that nice tight contour. So you actually move the belly button when you do a, a tummy tuck? When you do a full tummy tuck, yes. You make an incision all the way around it, you pull the skin down over it, and then you make a new opening for the belly button to come out. So it actually stays in the same position, but you make a new hole for it to come out. Wow, yeah. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Well, it allows us to get out a lot of all the extra skin out that you need to have removed. And you'll never notice the incision because it's mm -hmm. hidden inside the belly button. Now, is that something um, a man would go through? I mean, with women, we tend to, you know, but what about a man? Do men go through tummy tucks? They, they certainly do. And in most cases, a lot of men store fat differently than women, and so it's more central fat. But they still do benefit from that same procedure that we do with our tummy tucks, which is bringing that central musculature together. Mm -hmm. With women, they have babies, and that stretches out that six-pack, if you will. And so they get what's called a diastasis repair. It's really creating an internal corset. If you remember how the corsets are made, they have the tight straps with the strings and yes. you're pulling real tight, but it also brings in the midsection. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing internally on top of lifting and then stretching and removing the excess skin to give the overall hourglass shape to get that final nice refined result. Go on in a couple cc's of liposuction, then you have the, the, the absolute full package. So if you don't have an hourglass shape, you could actually create one. You can certainly get somebody closer to that shape. I mean, it depends on what, you're, what the person is starting with. But somebody who is in otherwise good shape, that you go ahead and put the muscle back together, you remove the excess skin, you can absolutely accentuate their natural hourglass shape that they have. Now, thank you, gentlemen. That was extremely informative. Um, if you would like to find out more information about tummy tuck and less invasive procedures on that flatter tummy, please check out their website at finesseplasticsurgery.com. Dr. West, I'm interested in finding out. I want to do just a little bit, not too much. I'm conservative, so what would you recommend? I don't want to be out here, but I want to just keep that liveliness to it. What, what would you recommend for me? Well, uh, you, the, the key with all these things is it really starts with a thorough evaluation. So what I would recommend is make an appointment with us. Come in, and we'll assess you, and we'll figure out what are your goals, uh, and we can show you photos of a range of patients, uh, what, for surgeries, what surgeries they have chosen, what implants they've chosen, so that you can start to get an idea of it. If you're talking about implants, we'll show you a range of implants. There's a huge range. There's hundreds of choices. We'll show you anything from a very small implant to a more moderate to a large implant, and we'll let you try them on, and you'll get a sense very quickly what makes sense for you. You know, it's, it's like the porridge. You're going to find out what's too small, what's too big, and what's just right. All right. And then, Dr. Gowan, the question my husband's going to want to know, he's going to like that, but the cost. Because I just want to do a little something, what can I do that will be cost-effective for my pocketbook. So, you know, can you tell me about cost-effective procedures? That's what he wants to know. <laughs> so, so certainly the breast augmentation is not going to break the bank, but when you add more procedures such as lifts and otherwise, it's going to cost more because it takes more time. I can't really give you a good assessment until we choose which procedure would work best for you, and then we can work out financing options that we have available through our office that can make it available to any person. Everyday Kitchen is next with Everyway Woman. Are you in every way, woman? Blanco, Reposado, and Yeho, what's this all about? We're tasting tequila when we come back. We're bringing the bar home. We are here with Mandy from 88 Tequila, and joining us is Cheryl to let us know the difference about tequila. Which I'm so excited, because we yes. get to play with tequila. Yes. I didn't even know there was a difference. Yes. Tell us. So many differences. Um, our tequilas are actually ultra premium sipping style tequilas. So they're made with 100% blue agave. It's not your typical low grade tequilas. Ours are a little higher end. So the budget a little bit higher, but it's very comparable to some of the other higher ends. What's blue agave? Blue agave is the type of plant that the tequila is made from. There's hundreds of different types of agave plants and they all taste and smell so different. And blue agave is the top, it's the premium and- So it has a taste? Yes. What kind of taste? 
it's hard to explain. <laughs> it's a little hard to explain. Okay, okay. Because for some, it, it all depends on your taste buds. For some people, it could be sweet. For some people, it could be a little tangy. For other people, it could be a little sour. So it just, it all depends on your mouth nice. and what you like. Nice. Yeah, and what you feel. What is it that you have? We have mm -hmm. a Blanco, which is rested for about three months. Most Blancos aren't rested at all. So ours is actually rested. It soaks in that agave flavor, so it gives you that very smooth feeling and flavor when it's going down your throat. So rested means that it's stayed out longer, right? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know nothing about yeah, the Yeah, it, because once it's distilled, it's kept in these stainless steel tanks. So that's rested. Usually okay. from there, they bottle it right away. So the Blanco's rested three months. Our second one is the Reposado. This is the Blanco? That okay. is the Blanco. Okay. Um, that's the last one. The, okay. the middle one is Reposado, and that one is aged. Ours is aged anywhere from 8 to 12 months. The Ooh. Mexican government only requires about two months. So ours is aged a lot longer, and it's aged in these bourbon oak barrels. I can smell it already. Which is what gives it the color, <laughs> yes, and the smell and the taste. It's, it's, it's amazing. Then the last one here is Añejo. And this is the top of the top, and this one is aged for anywhere from 20 to 24 months. Typically, it's about 12 months most other mm -hmm. brands and stuff would do it for, but ours is 24 20 to 24 months. So you get a lot more flavor, a lot more smells, a lot more smoothness, and it's just so much more enjoyable. I can actually um, smell it all the way over here. That's why I was, you know, smelling. Yeah. Um, what are the difference between smells, though? Like, which one's stronger? I wouldn't even know. What it's not It's not so much that it's stronger, but you get different smells out of the different ones. So, like, the Blanco, for instance, since it's rested in stainless steel, you smell a lot more of the agave. So you get citrus notes, you get herbal notes, you get floral notes out of the Blanco. When you move over oh, to... I can smell it all right. <laughs> Just kidding. But I can't drink it. I'm going to be tipsy. I'm going to leave that to you, our taster. <laughs> there you go. Try that one out. <laughs> let us know what's the the flavor you know what i can definitely i can definitely taste the citrus notes citrus it is extremely smooth yeah smooth. I mean, it's, yes. it's not you know is that the way it's supposed to be smooth okay yeah exactly yeah so when you move on to the darker ones you get more of the walnut flavor, the hazelnut, you get the caramel, you get vanilla, you get a oh, lot I of smell different the vanilla. Yes. notes on that one. You still get some of the citrus, you get some of the flora, but it's all just kind of... Is this, this one much harder though? No. Do you get that tequila? A lot of people, a lot of people <laughs> assume that the darker <laughs> ones are harsher than the lighter ones. Darker ones are actually a lot smoother because they've been aged a lot longer. Okay, now you talked about... Well, before, go, go, go ahead and taste it. Go ahead and taste <laughs> it. But I, I can smell the barrel. Yes. I do want to talk about the plants, though. You were talking, there's, you said that they're, they were made out of different plants, so, well, you know. Well, there's different types of plants, but ours is just 100% blue agave. So ours is only the blue agave. <laughs> I couldn't, ooh. Yeah, that's, that, that, bro, that gave me the, <laughs> that's good stuff. <laughs> only for today. <laughs> so then they have, it's, all of them were by blue agave. Yes, all of ours are 100% blue agave. Okay, awesome. And so, one, which one's the one that that gives you that full flavor? Because the, the, añejo, the middle one's not here, so I can't taste it. You get it. a lot of flavor out of all of them, mm -hmm. but the añejo is the one you get the most different types of flavors mm -hmm. out of it because there's so many different mixtures and the resting gives it a lot more time to soak in all those flavors. Which one is the strongest that you would say? I know every taste bud is different. Yeah, everyone's so different. Um, a lot of people assume that the darker ones are stronger, but to me, the darker ones are so much smoother. And really? Yeah. And and the Blanco. What do you say? I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> see? And, and usually we go Blanco for shots, Reposado for mixing, and Añejo for sipping on. That's kind of my theory, but everybody has their own way of doing it. Okay, so do you, can you... Can you bake with it can you yes, I know you I know can. we're gonna do some cocktails today but Definitely. could you cook with it you can cook with it you can make desserts with it you can make popsicles with it you can do margaritas Popsicle. and Ooh. martinis and all kinds of cool stuff awesome I am so I'm so excited um, well girls um, I think we should cheer to the end of the week I want to hear that cheers. no tequila faces and we'll be right back with every way 
woman. Stay with us for tomorrow's stars. Are you in every way woman? Are you in every way woman? Every woman celebrates tomorrow's stars, and today I'd like to introduce Camelia. Welcome, Camelia, to the show. Fellow Mr. Commander, I am so glad to see you here in Los Angeles. We've seen you all over town. You can also find her on After Buzz. Today yes. you're on our stage. Take it away. Thank you. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Like she said, I'm originally from Michigan, Flint, Michigan, which is an hour outside of Detroit. But I never really go back to visit because as soon as you step off the plane, you lose your job. I don't know if you ever knew, you knew that. <laughs> You get off the plane, you're like, did I just lose my gig? I lost my job. You broke, you lost everything. I also have a crazy mom. Anybody here have crazy moms? Yes. If, if, what I like to say is if you don't know or have a crazy mom, you're usually the crazy mom. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> my mom is uh, crazy. I caught her watching Fatal Attraction with a pen and a notepad. That's when I found out she was crazy. I walked in and she was taking notes, OK? But it was the 80s. I was raised in the 80s. My mom had a jerry curl. So that explains it. She had jerry curl and a drawer full of shoulder pads. So I don't know whether. As a child, whenever we would go places, she would be like, girl, that outfit would look good with some shoulder pads. And we would have to go in the room and get the shoulder pads. And I'm like, mom, I'm six. Like, what am I going to do with shoulder pads? I'm six years old, really. Uh, she also would use crazy scenes in her favorite movies to teach us lessons. Anybody familiar with Boys in the Hood? Mid-movie, Boys in the Hood, Ricky, who is the star football player, gets shot in the chest and he dies, unfortunately. But during that time in the movie, my mom looked at me and my sister and was like, you see, that's what happens when you don't do the dishes and clean up the bathroom like I told you. You see that? Get in there and do what I told you to do. It's ridiculous. I just wasn't raised right, guys. That's the point. I wasn't raised right. My dad took me and my sister out of ballet class because he was tired of missing Soul Train on Saturdays. So he was like, you know what? Houdini was on last week, and I'm going to miss Boy George next time. Get your stuff. Let's go forever. And I couldn't. I never went back. I think it was because he wanted to be a Soul Train dancer secretly because he would make us move all the furniture out of the living room, and he'd be like, come on, kids. We're going to kill them this week. Yeah. But he was the only person who got to dance, and me and my sister would be sitting there waiting to get in all the time, all the time. Like, when we gonna get to dance, Daddy? Never. We never got to dance. Which is crazy. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate that. My aunt uh, wouldn't babysit us right. Uh, she used to give us special pop with our spaghetti for dinner. OK. When I got to college, I realized Special Pop was Seagram's Fuzzy Naval Wine Cooler. That's what it was. It was wine cooler. I was like, yo, is this Special Pop? This is delicious. I've been looking all up for this. This is delicious. Where you get that? They're like the corner store? I don't know. OK, I guess. But that's just how I was raised. It was, you know, it was a different time, and it was a different era. Um, I'm also. Uh, you know what? On that note, I'm just going to wrap it up. Thanks, guys. <laughs> it's been amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Everyone likes to get back to our community to find out how you, too, can match our donations for undergarments for, for needy kids. Go to everywaywoman.com. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. How long have you been in Los Angeles? I've been in Los Angeles for about four years now. Yeah? Yeah. Do you love it? Hate it? I like it. I don't like the traffic. Are you in every way woman? Every Way Woman gives back to the community. Go to everywaywoman.com to find out how you can match our donations of undergarments for needy kids. Thanks for getting to know Every Way Woman. This has been an Every Way Woman production. I'm an everyday woman, 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 in every way, yeah, yeah, I'm living my life, 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 living day by day, yeah, yeah, are you in every way, woman?